Hey guys, how's it going? So today we are gonna plant up the four flower beds behind the Hartley, as well as four pots that are around it. Here's a backed up look at the area. I'm just standing here, I can't even believe this is what I'm looking at. I cannot believe it. I'll probably always feel that way a little bit because it's something I never thought I would see in my own garden. But I think as the area comes together, it just kind of renews that feeling, maybe even more, because you see it coming more and more like a part of your space. And it's, you know, there's less uh, areas that need to be buttoned up around it. It just is amazing. Anyway, we've got some crab apple trees we're gonna be using as our anchor plants back here. Uh, I used crab apples in our last garden. I had a, a similar parterre sort of situation going on in our back garden and I had uh, four corners with a fountain in the center and I had four crab apples. At that time I planted lollipops. Today we are planting sparkling sprites. They look enormous <laughs> because they're sitting up in the gator right now, but I think they're gonna be perfect because they naturally grow in a sphere shape. 12 by 12 is how big they'll like top out at. Uh, unless you wanna prune them, which you can absolutely do, keep them like more lollipop topiary. But I kind of want, I want there to be a little shade back here, but I still want that structure. It's kind of like our rose trees over there. Um, even though the roses won't be in bloom all the time, the structure of those trees is amazing. So we're just gonna mirror that with these. Um, let me show you a close up of the tag here. So they're hardy to, down to zone four, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you can see the beautiful color of the crab apples. I specifically wanted this variety because of the color of the crab apples. Well, and the size. The fact that it grows more like a round sphere is very helpful, but I love that and I love the yellow fall color. We'll have quite a bit of red around here. There's an October Glory maple. We have Pacific Sunset maples, which are more of like an orangey. So it'd be nice to have a yellow colored, fall colored tree. And this is what we get to see in the spring right here. There's a close up of the blooms there. White kind of with a little blush of pink so so pretty so the goal is to get these planted and then i've got some uh, super tunias to plant beneath them we're just going to deck out the squares with annuals and then the four big pots on the corners these right here you know these four so on that end as well were four of the pots that were along this fence line you can see the last one of 10 so we have 10 left on the fence line that go down this way and the four i just showed you on the corners of the greenhouse were here 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 and here you know, this was like a little triangle shaped garden and there was gravel driveway around it. Um, in fact, where the tucrium is blooming right below that birch tree, that's about where the fence was that blocked off this whole back area. So when we took that garden out, we moved these four containers out to the south garden, left them there for a season and then brought them over here. And I love them. We've decked them out for winter. Uh, they had a beautiful uh, bouquet of spring tulips. We had blushing ladies and Johan Kruf. It was a beautiful, a bouquet of tulips, but now we'll put some things in there that will appreciate the summer heat and sun. Oh, look at that. The drip's going in them right now. Excellent. Now we know it works. You can see the Globemaster alliums looking beautiful. And let's see if the drip is going in this pot. Yes, it is. Still haven't figured out what I'm going to put in here for summertime. It's just, this is the south side of the greenhouse and it just bakes right here and it even though the uh, lids are open it's still like they're closed enough to trap a little extra heat so uh, maybe like lantana that grows a, a type that grows a little bigger so we can see some color but it really likes that heat yep the drip's working in this one Ooh. uh oh okay what do we got going here okay this one needs to be replaced see that one is dripping but the next one is not so it's plugged somewhere Bummer. Aaron said he was gonna come out here and help me dig the holes. Now we had the sauna tulips in here um, and we decided that we want to try to plant this area up maybe differently every spring. So we actually have a friend who a cut, has a cut flower farm um, and she sells to local uh, florists. So we popped out all of the tulips. They just pulled right out of the ground and we gave them to her. So she gets to grow them and use them for her business, which is really, really fun. You ready to dig some holes? They look good. They do, don't they? Yeah. You know what though? I was, I was noticing that this one's got a little bit of a crook. Yeah? In its branch. Don't get a paper cut. That would be a severe paper cut. Okay, so see this one? It's got like a... Sure. Like we're gonna have to... Tie it down. Maybe. It's like it goes straight and then it takes off. Yeah. I think if we just tie it down, it'll be fine. You think so? Yeah. Okay. 
So here's a look at them placed, but not planted yet. So we'll lose about a foot and a half of height here once they're planted, but they just look perfect. Oh, I love them so much. And you guys, we did not lose a single boxwood, not around the entire garden, this whole space. We did notice though, this is so funny, that three of them are a different variety. <laughs> So this I'm guessing is a winter gem and that is a green velvet. And we went with green velvets around here because they stay a lot smaller uh, than winter gems. I love winter gems and that's what we have up here and what we're gonna be planting around the brick patio area. But I need these to all match. So thankfully I ordered enough to have just a few behind our greenhouse in case some of these died this winter because we planted them so late. So I'll be able to pop these out, repot them and we'll use them over here and we'll replace these with the other green velvets. And Erin is currently getting Benjamin's lawn tractor up and running. We had to get a new battery for it. It's been uh, dead for most of the spring season. So they're working on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the containers planted until he's free. Oh, Benjamin's having a big time over there. Oh, look at him, there he goes. <laughs> so fun. And I think I'm gonna love these containers. Lots of purples and pinks. Centerpiece is going to be Meteor Shower Verbena. We're gonna ring around the verbena with these apple blossom geraniums, Maverick apple blossom. These are the ones we started from seed. Isn't that amazing? Like everyone should be starting geraniums from seed. They're just so easy and they're gorgeous. And then we've got this superbena, which is Violet Ice. Hi! And Supertunia Royal Velvet. Oh, I'm such a sucker for this color. Okay, so we're gonna go put our slow release fertilizer in all the containers and then we'll go through and get them planted. Day. I did get the containers done, which I love how they turned out. So we'll take a look at those. And then Erin and I are gonna get the trees planted. And then you can see I did bring over some Supertunia Bordeaux to plant below them. I'm just loving how it's coming together. They actually look really pretty with the alliums right now, but I love this mix, you guys. So Meteor Shower Verbenas, I did use three because these are big pots. They've got, a can't remember the diameter, but it's pretty good size. Um, so I wanted it to be impactful. So three of those, and those will be the nice tall vertical accent, but they're not too overwhelming. I was trying to decide if I should do like a purple fountain grass or something like that. And then I kind of went for something a little bit more wispy and a little bit more subdued. It'll add some color and some bulk, but it won't take away from, not that you could take away from the beauty of the structure, but you know what I mean. And then I surrounded those with apple blossom geranium. I had the perfect amount. I needed 12, so three for each pot, and that's what I had out in the greenhouse. So. I'm just loving this purple and soft pink look this year. It's just such a sweet look. And then we've got the Super Bina Violet Ice and the Super Trini Royal Velvet, three of each of those. So it's just gonna be a beautiful purple and pink look through the summer. Cannot wait to watch them grow and fill in and get even more color. All right, so now we plant trees. And these are in 15 gallon containers. So I'm not sure if we're gonna do a shovel or try to do multiple holes with an auger, we'll see. are part of the way in have a couple of holes dug we decided instead of fully planting one tree at a time we're going to dig all the holes first because i think don't you think like eyeing the whole well, project it's tough because if you if you try to put it you know like if you imagine that this little swoop doesn't exist and it's just an exact square then the tree ends up being a little bit too close to these boxwoods and so it's hard to say like should you should you you know kick it a little bit farther toward mm -hmm. this corner but i think you're right that digging all the holes first and placing them all and then you can kind of decide what looks good to the eye yeah 
and then you know as opposed to planting one and then deciding maybe they don't all four look good in you know the way you decided to go also it's hard not to line them up with boxwoods <laughs> you know you, your natural is to like count yeah. the boxwoods but these aren't going to be single boxwoods forever it's just going to be a hedge so you kind of have to look past that and not use that as your barometer you just need to make sure it looks like it fits, fits. Looks good, yeah. yeah so we're just going to continue digging holes placing trees and then i'll stop and give you a look before we get them all planted now sitting in their holes and we've decided to go ahead and probably measure don't you think with a measuring tape a good idea. from brick to brick yeah it's just so hard you guys like you can line them up all day long from all different angles but you take one step to the you know right or left and it makes it look off so we're going to measure brick to brick brick to brick brick and make sure that we're pretty even on all of these i also swapped some of the trees around because this is our lowest bed here and this tree was sitting in that one initially which is the highest bed and it's three inches taller i knew it like looking at them i just thought that one is looking kind of perched up there so moved that one down here, moved a different one in there. Now they all look pretty even. Formal gardens can be tough sometimes when you're trying to get everything like pretty precise. And we just do like a, a fair job of it. <laughs> in the end, you know, things are going to take on their own growth pattern anyway. We may have one of these that's like super happy and grows a little faster than all the rest of them. Who knows? Hey, what do you got? Um, 114 in Laura is on a short little mental health break. She's distraught about how to put these in, so she's watering the greenhouse for a few minutes. I just watered them in since they're kind of sitting in their holes for a little bit. I just brought the hose over and I'm giving them a little bit of a drink. I think I already mentioned it, but the conundrum really is that, you know, if we center them in the square, you know, uh, imagining that this didn't exist, then it's gonna be really close to these boxwoods right here. So if we move it over though, then it's going to look kind of odd from this axis because if you line up from this boxwood to the back one then it would be over you know this way a little bit so it's really tough to decide how to put them in do you make it square just put it right in the center or do you move it over and back a little bit away from these boxwoods it's a tough call okay aaron told me that he let you guys know i had to take a little break and go water the greenhouse thank you aaron for that what i kind of figured out in the end i just I don't know, I saw it with fresh eyes when I was walking up to it, is that I need the trees to be centered with the structure. I mean, I need them to be centered in the squares visually, not actually, but I also need them to line up with the center of the Hartley. So by that, what I mean is the section on either side of the door. I counted in four of those, I don't know what you call them, white runs <laughs> down, and that's the exact center, and that's where I lined the trees up. And I think that's gonna be really nice and really pleasing balance-wise. Uh, if we did put the trees in the exact center, do you guys know the trunk would be like right here? Because, you know, we eliminated that part of the square, it visually pushes the center over, even though it wouldn't be the exact center. So I think putting the trunk here and then having a massive planting area around it wouldn't be quite right. I think using the line on the Hartley is gonna be the way to go. Anyway, I feel good about where they're at now. They look good to me. I think the way they're placed, I mean, they're wonky a little bit. You know, the trunk <laughs> the trunk is a bit wonky on two of these. Um, so we're gonna have to try to correct that a little bit along the way, and they may just correct themselves, but I think it's, I think it's nice. It looks good. All right, we're gonna get these things actually planted. Right
all done. And doesn't it look beautiful? I think it looks beautiful. I love it. I love the structure that the crab apples brought. I love the color of the Bordeaux. Now the Bordeaux plants themselves don't look that great when you look up close on them. When they were all bunched together in their flats, they looked gorgeous because they looked really full, like a huge gob of Bordeaux supertunias. And then when we started to separate them, we realized how leggy and like kind of stringy they had become, which happens when they're kept in their flats for a little bit too long. And we've separated, you know, we've got some annuals out in the high tunnel. We have separated every single um, annual that we have out there so that each one has room and air, airflow and proper light. Um, but until we have space to do that, we have to just kind of keep things in their flats. But these will be completely fine. I used a biotone starter fertilizer and I'm excited to see them fill in. I can just imagine what they're going to look like when they're completely completely full and just a massive color. They already look like a massive color. I love it. So now we've got to decide what to put in the center. I'm not so sure that we're going to do a fountain because I think we're going to be putting a fountain in over here on the brick patio and there will most likely be a water feature over here. So I'm thinking just a nice great big gorgeous container right in the center. Something like that. I don't know, or some kind of sculpture. I think that the Bordeaux down here and the purple in the pots, it's just gonna be so cool looking because you can see, you know, we've got lots of trees planted around this area, but nothing is super huge yet. So it's gonna be a full sun hot area. So using these cool tone purples and pinks will really visually bring the temperature down, I think. I just wanted to pop over here real quick to give you an update on these Julia Child tree roses because my goodness, they are stunners. This one has a lot of blooms from this side. And look at that. Oh my word, I love these so much. Oh, I was just so thrilled when I saw these come in down at the garden center. <laughs> that tree right there, crooked, dang. I am gonna also be swapping these containers out soon. I haven't had the heart to do it yet though, because I mean, they're kind of perfect at this point. I've got a tray of, I think they're called Silene, and I can't remember the variety name, but they are kind of a lowish growing annual that blooms pink. Um, and I thought that they might be really pretty in these two containers as something just a low colorful accent. So I thought I would just hang on to those in the greenhouse and once the violas kind of succumb to the heat, which we haven't, I mean, it's been warm. We've, I think we've had maybe a day or two in the 90, low 90s. Um, and we've got one day on, in the low 90s in the 10 day, but it hasn't been so hot that it's taken these yet and they just look so sweet. And they're in the exact color palette of everything else I'm doing back here. So we'll just let them live for a little while longer. Samantha was doing some decorating while I was uh, out working. When I came in here to check on her, she was picking all the sand off the top of these pots, dropping it on the floor. And she knew immediately when I walked in what I was gonna think about that. And she looked at me and went, go that way. <laughs> like, get out of here, don't look at what I'm doing right now. And you guys, that is it for today's project. I'm super happy with how everything turned out, the pots, the trees, the Bordeaux. And when Erin came back out here after I spent quite a long time, just looking at things. I walked, I probably got in my whole day of steps just <laughs> looking at these trees and standing back, looking at them, coming and moving it an inch or a half an inch this way or that way, standing and looking again, round and around and around. Anyway, when he came back out here, he said that he really liked where they ended up. So I'm glad. I think we both, we both really like it because they are, they are centered this way. Most definitely they're centered to the building, which I think is the most important thing. And then they're brought in just a little bit the other direction so that we have an equal amount of planting space so that it doesn't look awkward. Anyway, I've probably explained that mo more times than I needed to. I'm just really thrilled with how it, how it went down. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We still have some things to, well, we have a lot of things to do around here. I need to address this whole entire flower bed behind me. So we'll be back at it here soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.